we must have done something right. There's an episode two of the Hangtime Indiana podcast. Thankfully, Drake's mom watched the show an awful lot. My name is Greg Rakestrom, the vice president of the ISC Sports Network. This handsome on the radio fellow to my left is Drake Wally. He handles high school play-by-play production, etc. for our friends at Shine at 99 in Frankfurt. Thanks to the thousands of you. No, seriously, thousands of you that watched the opening episode of this. There's nowhere to go but downhill from here. Here we go, episode number two. The way this worked, Drake asked some really intelligent questions, and a couple that aren't so intelligent, but I make them sound good anyway. He asked the questions. I pontificate and go on and on and on and on and on for a period of up to like 25 minutes or as long as we can hold your attention. It's good to see you. Fire away. It's good to be here again. And as everybody knows, last week was an absolutely crazy week for basketball in boys and girls. But we really want to highlight a certain couple of things that happened in boys basketball. So, Greg, I'm going to give you the floor. Tell us about the crazy week we witnessed last week. Well, numbers one and numbers two go down in back-to-back days, and that is a massive story for Warren Central, losing for the first time since the sectional opening game against Lawrence North back in late February, early March of 2017. They had gotten their winning streak to 46 games. There were four wins shy of tying Lawrence North of Greg Oden and Mike Conley Conley. Vintage from the mid-2000s as far as having the longest winning streak in the history of the state of Indiana, but they couldn't beat Lawrence Central twice in the span of five days. And we thought that might be the case because Coach Gooden's team is just that, is so good. Uh, Warren Central has pulled off some remarkable comebacks, some late game heroics in the last year and a half of this winning streak, but never got that opportunity. Lawrence Central knocked them off in mick play and regular season play on Friday night to put an and one next to Warren Central's name for the first time in quite some time. There was still another undefeated team in 4A basketball, and they went down the following night. The Carmel Greyhounds lost for the first time on the season. Brownsburg got them by a score of 52-50. to And I think Brownsburg is a very good team, but more importantly, as it pertains to Carmel, they're a team that matches up with them very well. Carmel starts 6'6", 6'7", 6'10", has outstanding guard play. They're not a team that's going to wow you offensively. They're just so solid. Brownsburg is a very good defensive team, is a tall team, is a physical team, not a great outside shooting team. So I do think there could be teams that match up with Brownsburg that kind of give them fits because I'm not sure if Brownsburg can match up with their offensive firepower. Mm -hmm. Carmel is not that team. Carmel's team that plays more in the half court. I think Brownsburg's a very good team when they can play in the half court. So Brownsburg gets them on Saturday night. And I think the AP voters got it right when on Tuesday afternoon, despite their first loss in two years, Warren Central remained the number one team in the state. I think it's Warren 1, Carmel 2, LC 3. I think that's a legitimate placing of those teams, but there's about this much that separates those two teams, or those three teams really, which means that postseason time and when Warren and Carmel play in mid-February, it's going to be fantastic. Well, you know, one of the things that, I, that, that I'm sure the people want to know is, uh, especially from an analytical standpoint, is how does a team like Carmel, like Warren Central, when they get done losing the especially Warren Central 46 wins that is a season and a half of non-stop winning how do you usually respond from something like that being such a gargantuan team like well that? we know the answer from Warren Central they played less than 24 hours later and beat Zionsville as part of basketball day Indiana uh, at Bankers Life Fieldhouse they didn't have time to sulk or you know lick their wounds they went back <laughs> out and played and again Warren and all the teams in the mix we talked about this last week play such a great schedule but these are are such talented young men that and and there are kids that have played in other places you know Manuel Brown played at Cecina Isaiah Moore played Mm -hmm. at Park Tudor last year they've been beaten before Mm -hmm. it's been a while since David Bell lost a game in anything he was undefeated (laughs) in basketball last year undefeated in football this year two-time state champs but he has played and lost in 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 the past so it's not surprising that this group kind of got back on the horse quickly and beat a very good Zionsville team on Saturday afternoon that Zionsville team took Warren Central to triple overtime (laughs) when they played in the regular season last year and Warren Central found a way to get the victory in that game. Nobody in that locker room I think would say this. I'm not sure head coach Chris Byers would say this, but there were some friends of mine associated with the program 
that I think were actually relieved that it was like, you know what? We can stop talking about this streak. Now let's go talk about winning the Mick championship and let's go talk about winning a state championship for a second consecutive year. Well, and that's great that you said that. And it's great that they that they think that because everyone was getting caught, including us. We weren't even talking necessarily about sectionals or what they were going to do in sectionals. We were talking about 47, 48, 49, 50. So that is actually kind of a refreshing thing when you learn that you can actually lose and move on and focus on the big thing. I had a friend of mine on Twitter that's not affiliated with Warren Central in any way, shape, form, or fashion tweeted me last Thursday, maybe even Friday, said, hey, what's the fifth game that Warren's going to play? I think I need to be at that game. And I never responded to him. But my thought was, hey, worry about Lawrence Central first and then worry about Zionsville after that. And the good thing is, I trust me, this was not a case of Warren Central overlooking Lawrence Central in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Right. Because again, in the Marion County Championship last Monday, LC led into the final three minutes of that game. <laughs> exactly. So, so again, this, this was simply... A very good team got beat by another very good team, and they will have a rubber match. They'll have the best of three uh, unless someone knocks one of them off in sectional play because they're both a part of that maniacally good sectional number 10, which, oh, by the way, also includes Cathedral, another <laughs> top 10 team, and Lawrence North, another really good basketball team as well. Now, Greg, you had mentioned uh, Cathedral. You had mentioned yep. that, uh, a little bit about them. Now, they have a tough game coming up. Tell us a little more about Cathedral. Well, they got a tough week coming up, but again, that's the schedule of the top teams in, in central Indiana. So Cathedral has already won a 16-team tournament earlier in the year when they won the wedding invitational over uh, over at Richmond. Now they're trying to win a 14-team tournament, that being the city <laughs> tournament, and do so for a third consecutive year. On Monday night, they beat a very good Cardinal Ritter team, 76-61. Armand Franklin, bound for Indiana University, had 23 points in that game. It is a senior-laden, deep team that Jason Delaney has. They get plenty of attention when it comes to the city because they have won that seemingly more years than they've not over the last 15 to 20. Um, they, they get attention from recruiting services because of a player like an Armand Franklin and now Tayshawn Comer, a freshman, has already been offered by Miami of Ohio. That happened over the course of the weekend. Uh, but they're a team that, again, if they're in any other part of the state or in any other sectional, they're talked about as one of the best teams in the state. They're kind of pushed to the side because of Warren Central and Lawrence Central we all being in their same sectional. But Cathedral is really good. They're fought, they're physical, they're senior laden, and they're a very deep basketball team. They're going to be a tough out in any tournament, whether it's the city championship game against a good Crispus Addicts team or whether it's in that sectional 10 that comes around in about six weeks. That sounds absolutely wonderful. And as we've been talking about, we've talked a lot about boys, but something else that's been happening is the sectional pairings for girls basketball 1A through 4A. We're going to touch on that. And the way that we're going to do this is I'm going to bring up it by, I'm going to bring it up by class. Greg is going to elaborate on several of the top teams and the matchups that we are more than aware waiting to see, especially in the girls' sectional, very competitive. And, you know, we're going to start with 1A. Tell us a little bit about sectionals 49 through 64 with the sectional pairings for girls. Well, all right. So as far as top teams in 1A are concerned, and you will notice a consistent theme, and that is that a lot of the teams that we talked about last year that made it to Bankers Life Fieldhouse, I think have a very good chance of getting back to Bankers Life Fieldhouse, if not holding the trophy for a second year in a row. So let's start in 1A. Teams numbers 1 and 2 are literally the two teams that uh, fought it yep. out for state championship last year. Marquette Catholic is number one. Um, they have only lost twice this year. The Nolan Twins are their top players, Emma and Sophia. They are going to play at St. John's University in the Big East next year. Wow. Number two team in the state is Vincennes Reve. As of this taping, they have yet to lose a game this year. Number two in the state, Grace Wagner is their top player. She is going to Indiana University as a preferred walk-on. Now, she's going there on a full academic scholarship, but as a preferred player for head coach Terry Moore. And of course, Indiana has backed up last year's women's NIT championship by having one of their best regular seasons in program history. And Grace is a player that will help that team once she gets on campus next year. The Reve story is remarkable. One of literally the smallest schools in the state, usually enrollment around 100 or so kids. Wow. And over the last decade,
decade. They frankly have had more years where they've made the 1A Girls State Final than years where they've not made the 1A Girls State Final. <laughs> so we'll start with those two teams right there. Now, one of the other best teams in 1A is in Vincennes Reve sectional. Lagodi is ranked number five in the state. And so Reve and Lagodi, you expect, will square off at some point in time in their sectional in southwestern Indiana. A couple of teams that certainly deserve a mention in Class 1A University in the mm -hmm. Indianapolis area. Their boys Absolutely. and girls are both in the top 10 of their respective classes. And North uh, Northview as well. Uh, Northfield, excuse me. Northview would be in 3A. Northfield in 1A out of the Wabash area. Uh, they were 18-4 and four going into this last week of the season and a favorite to make it out of their sectional, sectional number 54. That sounds like a very compelling uh, 1A sectional, especially the first rounds that we're going to see. And then now transitioning from that, we're going to move on to a little bit bigger, and that's 2A. 33 through 48, got to be some exciting news you have for us for 2A sectional. Well, Central Noble uh, is the defending champ, and much like Marquette Catholic, literally returns all their key pieces back. Two key players for Central Noble. Uh, Malia, uh, excuse me, Sydney Freeman, their guard. Malia Leatherman, their post player but most of the starters around them return as well. Going into the last week of the regular season, they are also undefeated. Now, they beat Winchester in the championship game last year at Bankers Life Fieldhouse, and Holly Gutierrez's team uh, has played a great schedule. Uh, they are in the top five in the state of 2A as well, so we could see a rematch in 1A. We could see a rematch in 2A. Wow. But there's a couple of other teams that certainly deserve to be talked about elsewhere in the bracket in 2A. Triton Central is the one that jumps off the page at me. They are ranked number two in the state. One loss this year to the defending champs in Central Noble by six back in the month of November. Monroe Central is another quality team in the 2A ranks. Oak Hill that was the champs two years ago, they're in kind of the same area of the state as Central Noble. Would not see them until the regional, the semi-state round. It's a good 2A field, but again, I think that it is Central Noble clearly is the favorite. Who comes out of the South? that might be up for a little bit more discussion. And see, it actually sounds like the way that, that you described the 2A, uh, the, the 2A spectrum is that it's, it could potentially be wide open, just like you discussed with the boys 2A. I think more so in the southern half, is, is it more balanced? I do think there's a gap from Central Noble mm -hmm. to, say, the other top teams in 2A. Another team that certainly deserves a mention in 2A is Lafayette Central Catholic. They've been a oh, power, whether they're always. in the 1A ranks or in the 2A ranks. Uh, again, they would not see Central Noble until the semi-state round of the tournament if they can get that far, because there's some other really good teams that would be in their regional. Tipton would be in that group, too. Well, and that is going to be a very competitive and very wide open sectional sectionals uh, 33 through 48 and now we're going to transition to we're getting bigger we got the 3a schools we have sectionals 17 through, through 32 greg i'm going to give you the floor with that as well well clearly northwestern is the team we're talking about here the defending 3a state champs they just lost for the first time to a school from this state in the last two years wow. uh, they had lost a couple of games teams from ohio early in the year but north central of Foray, who we'll talk about coming up in a matter of moments, beat them as part of Basketball Day Indiana at Bankers Life Fieldhouse on Saturday, 72-54. I'm sure Northwestern feels like they don't need an excuse. They just got beat. I'll give them a bit of an excuse. They played Wednesday night. They played Friday night in their conference championship game <laughs> against Lafayette Central Catholic, and then to turn around less than 24 hours later and play North Central. Now, That's I know North, Cent competition. North Central had a long week as well, but it, it was maybe maybe it was the first time that because you played up, and they played a lot of good 4A schools this year. Mm -hmm. You know, they beat a very good Homestead team, for example, yep. in the uh, Raymond James Hall of Fame Classic Final uh, back on December the 28th uh, over in Newcastle. But maybe they hadn't met a team that had the combination of size and athleticism that North Central offered. Northwestern will not face a team like that in 3A. I still think they're the heavy favorite in 3A. Uh, Madison Layden has become the school's all-time leading scorer. She's just a junior. She's going to play at Purdue. Kendall Bostic, a junior, is going to play at Michigan State in a couple of years. Uh, Northwestern is a, is a tremendous team. I think they're a heavy favorite to be the back-to-back -back 3A state champs. Now, other good teams, other good stories to talk about in 3A. Of course. Mishawaka Marion is a really good team. 
they would run in to Northwestern once they got to the regional round. Really good story from the southern part of the state is Salem. Salem won their sectional last year with 22 and 5. Salem, to some degree, gets the benefit of North Harrison from their league and their sectional, having made the 3A state finals in both uh, 2016 and 2017. They are playing up a classification. They are playing in 4A. However, Salem played North Harrison this year twice and beat them both times. So, <laughs> wow. the, and the Lady Lions took home the Mid Southern Conference Championship this year for the first time in school history. So Salem is that team that wants to get that shot. And I think the other teams in 3A just go, listen, we know Northwestern is the best team. Give us our opportunity at that team. And for Salem, that opportunity wouldn't come until a state championship game. Well, and you know, uh, everyone wants that opportunity to take down the big dog. And this is just a little side note. Northwestern's basketball program, whether it's girls, whether it's <laughs> right. guys, it does not matter. They are always one of the top teams, and they're always very tough. Oh, by the way, the boys are 12-0 and and number one in three. <laughs> by the way, just thought we'd throw that in there, too. <laughs> well, now we have to move on to the big guns. The 4A schools, sectionals 1 through 16, what have you got for us? What's interesting is that in, in terms of great great early matchups, and we didn't really touch on there's a great early matchup in 3 we'll work back to here in a matter of moments, mm -hmm. but in 4A, much like we said the boys in sectional 10 are loaded, <laughs> you would say the exact same thing as far as the girls are concerned, and on the opening night of the tournament, Warren Central, the defending state champs, and North Central, who just beat the 3A champs, they play on the opening night of the tournament. Wow. Oh, and by the way, they play this Friday night first to end the regular season. <laughs> so they play on Friday night, then turn around and play on Tuesday in the sectional opening round. Winner of that game gets Lawrence North, who, oh, by the way, has won 16 games this year. And then lurking in the other half of that bracket, playing up two classifications because of the success factor is Heritage Christian that just beat a ranked Homestead team on Monday night this week. So sectional 10, regardless of what sport it is, is absolutely and utterly ridiculous from a talent <laughs> level, whether it's from boys basketball or from girls basketball. So in terms of sectionals, Drake, that's the one that stands out to me. Now, there are a lot of great teams, but say other than the ones in that sectional, they're all kind of spread out. You know, Crown Point is undefeated. They're in sectional number one. Penn is undefeated. They're in sectional number three. I know Homestead just lost. I expect them to go deep into the tournament. And mm -hmm. also in the northern half of the bracket. Even though they're an Indianapolis area team, they're in the northern half of the bracket. Hamilton Southeastern, number one team <laughs> in Class 4A, led by Sidney Parrish, averaging 21 points and seven rebounds a game. Chris Hoopenthal, their head coach, won his 400th game this year. Hamilton <laughs> Southeastern is good every wow. year, but this might be the best team he's had at HSC. Well, you know, we, we've we covered 1A through 4A. One of the questions I want to ask you is, is I know that, you know, that's a lot of, that's a lot of sectional brackets, but what are, uh, you know, two or three matchups that really stick out to you that, that should be should be something very interesting to watch? Well, clearly Warren Central North Central as far as 4A sectional 10 the opening night. Mm -hmm. The only other matchup off the top of my head I believe of ranked teams in the first round. Let's go back to the 3A classification. Norwell and Belmont. Going into this week, they were ranked number two and number six in the state and then there's Marion that is also in their sectional that won the sectional last year and they ended up winning the North Central Conference this year. Another good basketball and, school. And, and they have won 17 games. So that sectional, which I think off the top Man, I think it's sectional 23 that, that, that those teams are in. I know it's in the northern half of the bracket in 3A. Again, we didn't have that many sectionals where you know ranked teams are going to play each other right off the jump. Mm -hmm. We had it in 4A with North, North Central and Warren Central. We have it in 3A with Norwell and Belmont. So much awesome action is coming up in these girls' sectionals, but one of the things I have to ask is, are there some teams that maybe are flying you know a little bit under the radar that, uh, might, uh, that might surprise some people, that people may overlook a little bit. Well, I, I reference them in passing just because, again, their sectional is so loaded, but Heritage Christian did get the benefit of the draw. Where, for example, if you're North Central or Warren Central, in theory, you got to beat three ranked teams to get out of your sectional. That's ridiculous. Right, Heritage <laughs> Christian now watches the other three teams duke it out in one half of the bracket. They mm. get to be in the opposite half of that bracket. So Heritage Christian is a team that, that comes to mind in 4A. Uh, you know, as far as the other classifications are concerned, a team that always gets a lot of love in the 1A level, and rightfully so, is Oregon Davis. They're a team that has won a state championship in the past. They just, I think, got knocked out of the top 10 this week. They're in the same sectional as South Central of Union Mills, who beat them and are ranked, but again, 
Michigan, Oregon Davis, if they keep playing deep into the tournament, that's always a team that uh, wouldn't go about surprising anybody. And there's another sectional in 1A in the southern half of the bracket that I think deserves some mention. Uh, it's sectional 60. And going into this week, they had five teams with 13 or more wins that are in that sectional. Jackson Dell was the only team that was ranked. But a lot of those teams have kind of gotten wins against one another so far this year. So whether it's Jackson Dell, whether it's Waldron, whether it's Oldenburg Academy, those are all really quality teams. So it might be an unranked team that comes out of that group but it could be an unranked team that, that could have a, a decent run in the 1A South draw. Well, and that's the beautiful thing about sectionals is that at any given moment, right. at any given time, and it's single elimination. When you're done, you are done. And that is what's going to be very fun to watch in these girls' sectionals and to see what's going to actually unfold. And there's also, you know, let's not forget soon, you know, obviously not happening now, but soon we do have the boys' pairings as well. That's going to be very exciting. You know, we've been talking about the sectionals and everything, but, uh, you know, what's on your radar? What are some of the stories that, that are coming up here before sectionals or maybe some some really big games that uh, people should watch before the tournament begins. All right, so there's a variety of games you can go see around the Indianapolis area. And again, I'll plug it one more time. Warren Central, North Central, that is a girls-boys doubleheader. And frankly, over the years, it's been the boys game that has drawn the most interest. <laughs> this time it is the girls game that draws the most interest in knowing they're going to play each other again coming up in just five days. Similar setup on the west side of town as far as 3A is concerned. Danville and Tri-West could be playing for both their girls and boys Sagamore Conference Championships and a girls boys doubleheader coming up on Friday night. And then Danville and Tri-West will see each other again once you get to the postseason round of things just the next week. So so that's a great doubleheader to go watch on Friday night. If you want to go watch teams duke it out at a smaller level, make a little more of a drive outside of Indianapolis in the Hoosier Heritage Conference mm. or Hoosier Heartland Conference. I get my HHCs confused. <laughs> the little guys northwest of town, Rossville and the Eastern Comets play on Friday night in boys basketball and that is the game that likely determines the boys champion in that league as well. So there's a 4A, a 3A, and a combo, those are both 2A schools, I guess, and mm -hmm. a 2A matchup for you to go watch in Central Indiana over the course of the weekend. A lot of amazing games to watch, especially even before the tournament even starts. By the way, one more game oh, I'll throw out there. Please, go ahead. I, 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 I felt bad leaving the 1A guys out. So there's a 1A <laughs> game I'm going to tell you about on Saturday night. But if you want to go, you might want to leave like on Thursday because they only have X amount of seats in their gym. And that is at Oldenburg Academy. Now the Twisters under head coach Gary Mormon have been ranked for most of the year. They play in a teeny tiny building, five rows of bleachers, I think on both sides of it. This wow. is their final game in that gymnasium. They are on the road for the month of February. They're not home given that size of gym, you're not surprised, for their sectional. <laughs> They're going to build a new gymnasium in time for next year. I'll have that game on the ISC Sports Network. They host a very good Heritage Christian team on the boys' side. So if you, if you can't make it down to Oldenburg, which is a quaint and charming little town, Big fan of the Pearl Street Pub, by the way, when I'm in Oldenburg. Around Batesville, Indiana. Yeah, just a little mm. bit north of there. It's all German and everything. Yes. I, think, I think it's called Pearl Strasse Pub or something <laughs> along those lines officially in Oldenburg. But I go with the English, so the Pearl Street Pub. Go down and visit them on Saturday night and pack that place for the last game ever in that building. And it's two really good small school basketball teams. That one comes your way on Saturday night. We've got sectional play. We've got games coming up before sectional play. We have historic last games. So much amazing action so many wonderful games coming up even before the big tournament starts and it is going to be absolutely amazing basketball right here in indiana drake you've got seven days to think of of tremendous intelligent thoughtful probing questions the way that you had today good to see you buddy good to see you too thank for, you greg for drake wally this is greg rakestraw thanks to todd young behind the scenes we'll do it again next week here on the hang time indiana podcast